In this demo, we're going to be looking at using Test Modeler for testing Microsoft Dynamics applications to accelerate functional test automation. The journey can start with a product owner who can create models of the requirements of the system. Testers can also use Test Modeler to create a model of how the system should work. Once a model has been created, the minimum number of tests to maximize coverage can be exported into your test case management tool. Test data can be made and found just in time and overlaid on the model from a wide array of backend data sources. The model can also be used to export automation into numerous different automation frameworks with test data embedded inside. Scripts are automatically pushed to the source control management system and can be picked up by your continuous delivery pipeline and tooling. Within Test Modeler, we have extensive scanners and accelerators to get started with building the models, page objects, and we can also import any existing libraries you have in your framework. Once we're ready, the automation can be executed with any data dynamically resolved just in time and executed against your Dynamics 365 instance. All run results are synchronized back up to Test Modeler along with any test case management systems exported to along the way. Let's scan our Dynamics application. So the page we're going to be focusing on testing in this demo is the contact form we have here. Now what we can do is use our accelerator in the top right here, our browser extension, to come in and start scanning the components that we want to automate in our application. So we're going to pick out some of the fields here that we want to automate and populate some values for. And we'll also pick out this error message here, which is triggered because the last name is a field that must be populated. We'll also capture the save button here and the save and close. Okay, so we scanned the elements we wanted here and now we're gonna upload these into Test Modeler and we'll call this our new contact form. And we'll hit upload. Now, if we come back over to Test Modeler and take a look in our project here and look at modules, what we'll see is that we've got two objects here for creating a new contact form. The first one is an object repository with the objects we scanned and all of the different identifiers we've picked out. The crucial piece with Dynamics is we've picked out the preferred identifiers, which is the ARIA labels and the data IDs, which are pretty static between each release of Dynamics. So we've got our objects here that we scanned and we've also constructed an implementation layer, in this case in C Sharp. What's also happened is we have our framework stored inside Git. And if we take a look here, we'll see that we've got a new commit that has been made. And within this commit, we've added our file to our project, but also we've got all of this code here that's been auto-generated by Test Modeler to interact with the new contact page with actions like entering a first name, enter a last name, enter an email, click the save button, etc., etc. So now we have some automation objects that we can use to interact with our Dynamics 365 contact form. We're now gonna build a model. Now the next piece here is we need to build a model. Now we've already built out some models for navigating to the create contact form page, which we're gonna use in a minute. But for now, we need to create one for the contact form. So we'll create a new model here and we'll open it up. Now what we have here is our model editor where we can drag and drop processes and start connecting them together to create a model. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a model from the actions that we scanned. So we'll open up the project here, and what we're gonna do is we're literally just gonna start coming in and selecting the actions we want to perform. So the first one is we want to enter a first name, and we're then gonna enter a last name. Now what we'll see here is as we've dragged in these actions, it's automatically split it for us into the different equivalence classes and the different types of data which can be input into each of these fields. Now, if I enter an invalid last name and I click save, what should happen here is we should get a last name error. So we're just gonna add a little assertion here to check that. And what will happen is I should end up in an error state. Now, what we're gonna do is just carry on and build out the rest of this model by selecting the rest of the attributes here, like the email, etc etc okay so we've just finished building out our model here and what you should end up with a model of is all of the different journeys you can go down 
where you end up with a successful contact created and the other routes here where you end up in some kind of error because some validation has been triggered you should end up with a visual image of how your application or component of the application works and this is what represents your model now here we're going to save this model and we're going to use it to create a much bigger end-to-end -end process so we've got our model for creating a contact form but in order to get to this page we have to go through a number of steps which we've previously modeled out so we'll create a new model here which is going to be create contact we'll save this and now what we're going to do is we're going to add a start block but crucially we're going to come in here and we're going to start overlaying and embedding the different processes we need to get to our contact page so the first thing we need to do is perform a login and in here we have all of our functionality for performing that login so we'll connect that up the next bit we need to do is go through our dashboard page to select our customer service screen in this case so we'll link this one up when we log in successfully we'll go to our dashboard page we're then going to come through here and we'll go through the customer service menu which we've modeled out so we'll bring that one open if I end up on the customer service page then I want to go to the customer service menu we're then going to go to the contacts menu we'll connect this up and link it in so if I go through to the contacts page we can end up on the contacts menu and then after that we're going to go into our contacts form so we'll connect that in so if I end up on my contacts menu and I go to create a new contact we will go through the new contact form process and here at the end I can either end up successful which is because I've successfully created a new contact or I end up in some kind of error where a new contact is not created so we'll pick that one out and we'll label this error now what I've done here is I've just expanded all of these sub processes so you can see the end-to-end -end chain we're testing so we're logging in going to the customer service page we're then going through to the contacts page here we're then going through to create a new contact and then we're going through our contact form to create different types of contacts and assure that our create contact process is working so here we've got the full end-to-end -end chain which is abstracted using our sub processes now we can come in and perform a generation to generate our test passing through these processes what you'll see here is that 11 paths have been generated which is the minimum number to maximize coverage and as I click through these different paths you'll see the different deviations they're covering and testing through this process now the next piece we can do here is we can export our tests into a test case management system we're going to come in and export into Jira okay so we'll see here our task is complete if we do a refresh over the test suite we'll see that our tests have now got a link associated with them if we take a look at our links what you'll see is there's actually a Jira that's embedded here and we can now go off and open up these Jira issues that have been created and we can see here in our Zephyr plugin we have our test steps that we have from from the models and we've also got our Zephyr test steps that are embedded in here as actions as so now the final piece here is we can go off and generate and run our automation to do that we'll come in here and we're going to select to generate our automation we'll hit execute and what this is going to do is resolve all of the data dependencies generate the associated automation code push it into our source control management system execute it and synchronize the run results okay so our automation has been running here if we do a refresh what we'll see is that the run results have been passing through and our tests have passed we can come in and take a look at the results here and we'll see step-by-step -step logging that has been captured along with screenshots as we've gone through here of the different states of our application that have been triggered now if we come back into our source control here what we'll see is that we have a new commit that has been made and if we open that one up we'll see that we've now got our test case that's been added to our project along with the associated automation code for each of these scenarios along with the embedded test data here to go in 
and enter our addresses, our titles, our emails, etc., etc. And we'll see here all of those different scenarios that have been automatically pushed and created in our open source C Sharp framework in our source control management system. So this is how we can go from a Dynamics form to creating models, creating a full end-to-end -end scenario here, executing the tests and pushing automation code out into an open source framework. Thanks for watching this video. Visit testmodeler.io to start your free trial today.